We'll open a public hearing, RSA 4014-4 and RSA 4014-B11, semicolon B. The question of proposed a warrant article 43 delegating the de determination of the default budget to the Municipal Budget Committee instead of the Board of Selectmen. Anybody from the audience would like to get up and speak? Good evening. You should be announcing the time that you open the public hearing just in case. Well, I'm not by that clock. Just in case something should come up in court and whatever, it, it pays to document. Good evening. Um, Mary Louise Wolsey, 148 Little River Road. Mr. Pierce and I submitted this private petition article uh, after our experience this year uh, with the Budget Committee. Uh, it is um, the authority to create the default budget is, cre is granted to the Budget Committee by statute, and there are usually a number of Budget Committee members who are quite competent in math, so we thought it might be the time to let the Budget Committee go ahead and start preparing the default budget, which is very critical, as I mentioned at the uh, deliberative session. The public does look to the default budget to figure out whether or not they're going to vote for the operating budget, so they need something accurate. Uh, this should save perhaps a little time for the Finance Office, which is at its busiest uh, at that time of year. So we will appreciate having the voters support Article 43. Anybody else like to speak for the public hearing? All right. sure. <clears throat> Jerry Zanoy here, 16 Presidential Circle. I did endorse this article. I signed the sheet of paper that came around. There's uh, several things that have concerned me about the default budget in years past, and that's the first. The first thing is that everybody scrutinizes the heck out of the operating budget, but somehow the default budget just seems to blow through quick reviews here at the Board of Selectmen. And end of end of the review session in, in January or February with the Budget Committee, well, not enough time is allotted to really go through that line by line, in my opinion. And there's 420 line items plus or five or so, in the operating budget. And when, you know, when the operating budget fails, last year's budget should pick up. Uh, and in addition to that, contractual line items. And how many real contractual line items do we have? Not very many in my opinion. <coughs> All the wages are certainly contractual, but we sign up for police and fire contracts for three-year contracts or two-year contracts, those are contractual, no doubt about it. If we get into an equipment, office equipment uh, warranty program for two or three years, that may be considered contractual. But how many really are contractual? And what I hear at the deliberative session several times was, how come if we vote the operating budget down, the budget increases the next year? How is that? And we tell them, well, it's last year's budget plus contractual line items, but there aren't that many. One thing that I don't like is the fact that we have given sizable raises in the mid-year, post after the approval of the budget, we've given raises, $10,000 raises in some cases to people. We've hired assistant town managers in September of 2014. All of that money goes into next year's default budget automatically. We have nothing to say about it. It's in there. It's costs that are in the default budget. Nobody thinks about counteracting that increase with reduction somewhere. We just add to the costs. $80,000 for an assistant town manager plus for benefit. Nobody approved on it except the selectmen. Therein, that cost is in next year's budget. 15 and 16, 17 and so on. And so aren't the raises. But we don't turn around and look to where to reduce costs anywhere to compensate for that fact. We just add to the costs. And I wonder if you consider something like utility cost contractual. So the utility cost for energy goes up every year let's say in the new police station, what are we doing about that? Is there an energy audit being performed? Is any corrective <laughs> measures being taken? Or are we just simply raise it up and say it's contractual? That's what concerns me about a default budget. 
that default budget should be scrutinized just as closely as the operating budget to give our taxpayers a fair shake here. I don't see that happening. I, don't, I think we've lost the definition of prudence and fiscal conservatism. I really have. Thank you. Anybody else who wants to speak? I'm Pierce, 84 Lock Road. <clears throat> and uh, this year, because the uh, budget committee schedule was kind of disrupted by a three-week delay in getting the budget, it gave us an opportunity to uh, uh, scrutinize the budget and compare the budget with last year's budget more closely. And because the default budget's right there in the Excel spreadsheet right next to everything else, it's easy to compare. And we did, and we found several discrepancies. And we brought that to the finance director's attention, and she corrected almost all of it. And um, that's my first point. And uh, so that means, going back to my first point, is in public, uh, you gentlemen didn't really scrutinize the default budget, at least in public. It was less than a minute from the time it was introduced to the time you approved it. So there was no discussion, there was no questions, there was no nothing, which indicates to me there wasn't much effort put into that. I'm not finding fault with that because when I was a selectman, we didn't put much, much effort into looking at the default budget either because we just assumed, make sure you get the assumed part, that it was following the state statutes. Well, this year when we were examining, we found that was not the case. So putting both these two issues together, I think it's time for the Budget Committee to take a close look at the default budget and have a, the time to scrutinize it because everything's right next to each other when we're looking at the budget anyway. So there'd be very little effort used there to do that function, whereas you guys have the uh, <clears throat> administrative pr privileges of looking out for the pr pr uh, provident affairs of the town. So putting that all in mind, I think we should leave you to administer and let the budget committee do the budget committee. And thank you very much, and I hope everybody supports this warrant article. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the public that would like to get up and speak? Good evening. Always a pleasure being in this room. This uh, Warren article, in my view, would take the creation of the default Warren article and place it rightfully where default budgets belong, in a budget committee. <laughs> if you have a budget committee, you would think the budget committee would make budgets. Well. We have a default. We have a budget warrant article every year, as all SB two towns do, in which there are two budgets in that warrant article. One is the proposed operating budget, which is produced by the budget committee. The other is the default budget, which is not produced by the budget committee. Kind of an oddity. You might wonder where this oddity came from. Well. This thing called SB2, which created uh, the ability to have all warrant articles, bud budget included, uh, to be placed on a ballot as opposed to having it inside of a a, uh, a deliberative uh, session where it's actually decided in the old-fashioned town meeting. This was changed in the mid-90s. And as state legislatures do, they made this, uh, this new provision, and of course it's rather comp com complex, changed a lot of existing laws kind of like Obamacare, changed a lot of laws and a lot of flaws. One of those flaws was it gave the default budget creation to the governing body, or the selectmen, as opposed to the budget committee. Approximately, well, less than 10 years later, the state legislature, seeing the error in their way, created this provision in the law that allows the town to return the creation of the budget to the budget committee. The whole of it, not just half of it. Right now the budget committee is functioning basically in a two-legged race with one leg. And uh, it produces an unnecessary degree of friction between the governing body and the budget committee. Because there are no clear bounds of authority. 
our responsibility between the governing body and the budget committee. When there are clear lines of responsibility, there are far less chance of friction. But what you see is a repeated intensity of friction that occurs every year, starting around October until around February, every year. And it's partly because of this friction point between the inability to discern just who is responsible for what. Again, the state legislature saw that error and they provided the provision, which of course this Warren article is intended to do, which is to give the default budget. By the way, an idea that the default budget, you know what that comes from? They had to make it up for SB2, because in order to put something on the ballot, it has to be a yes and no question. So what do you do when you say no to the operating budget? You have to have some, some reaction, and that reaction is a default budget. It has been said by people that uh, the default budget is nothing more than a simple formula of last year's budget, <coughs> plus or minus, whatever. But it's actually got a lot more discretion in it than that and has been used with some degree of uh, liberal discretion, shall we say. The Budget Committee has far more members of the Board of Selectmen. We have an ability to have more eyes on the default budget. Now, I know, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, you, uh, your body has already um, decided on this without deliberation, and it's now too late to change your mind on the ballot. So I'm primarily speaking to the audience because I'm, I'm interested in the public understanding the situation here. And the situation is simply that the budget committee ought to define budgets. If you're going to have a budget committee, like the Hampton Union said, we really ought to keep the budget committee. Well, we ought to keep it whole in terms of its responsibilities. Like the old days, the budget committee was responsible for the entire budget warrant article being brought to the deliberate session. Let's return to that. But the budget committee is responsible for budgets. It, it only makes sense. We will spend far more time scrutinizing the default budget as we do the operating budget than the governing body does because, frankly, the governing body is busy doing governing body stuff, and that's a lot of stuff you guys got to do. We don't need to burden you with that. we are already got some degree of expertise on the budget committee to handle it, and we're happy to do it. I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing, and I'll say good night. Thank you. Anybody else from the public that would like to get up and speak? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Is there anybody on the board that wants to speak? Regina? Uh, you want to speak? I just, just briefly, uh, number one, you know, th there are some points brought up by people that are valid points. There are some points that aren't valid points. I mean, the budget is, the default budget is laid out how it should be formed, and it is uh, formulas and one time things are taken out. Uh, what Mr. Zanoy said could be a question about raises taking place mid-year. I'm against that not being in the budget, but that would have nothing to do with the bu with the default budget because it's in the default budget anyways. So, you know, I think the default budget, if somebody thinks that something has been done incorrectly with the default budget, they can uh, report it to the DRA and go from there. Has that ever been done? <coughs> have we had that? So is there a problem with... with with the budget, with the default budget. No, there has not been a problem with the default budget. So why switch something with it that's working? It's Some people have a problem with other things, but not the default budget, and they want to control it by the default budget. So leave it as it is. Regina? Yeah, I just wanted to, on something that was said, and I'm sorry, I don't remember if it was Mr. Jones or Mr. Zanoy that said it, but um, the liberal, the default budget, you know, things being added to it liberally, I just wish that maybe if someone had a specific concern about a line item, I think there was a couple that they addressed to Christy and Christy got them answers and, you know, she recalculated something. But I just wish this, this should have been discussed at the Budget Committee, not now, not throwing it out to make, force the public to decide whether or whether or not this should happen. This is all information that it should have pre presented in the public hearings that started. <laughs> In October, whenever the, the budget committee received the budget, the beginning of November. And I don't agree with it, this even bring, being brought up right now. Thank you. Rick? Cool. Yeah, um, it's good to see my good friends again. And uh, Jerry won't be long before I see you down the beach with the grandkids. Um, I served as liaison to the budget committee. Uh, my first meeting, I strictly spoke to um, 
uh, the Budget Committee's performance of coming in at the 11th hour and cutting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, from the uh, budget um, on the night before or, or the very night that they were doing their, their budget hearing. Uh, the department heads had come in all throughout the uh, budget process to that budget committee. Most of the members are still on the board. Uh, the department heads were never uh, asked about that. Uh, the board of selectmen were never asked about that. Nobody was ever informed about that. The town manager wasn't informed about that. I was accused of being mean to the budget committee when all I did was simply speak to the facts of the execution phase of their um, their maneuvering. Uh, and they thought that, that it was mean, um, but I was simply speaking as I do now. I didn't approve of that. Uh, I thought it was disrespectful to the taxpayer. Uh, I thought it uh, was not in terms and uh, not in keeping with uh, transparency. There have been transparency issues with the uh, Budget Committee this year. Uh, we'll address those. Uh, hopefully that they're not continuing. Uh, I respect Jerry's uh, input into the uh, uh, legislative process, if you will, here in this town. Uh, the budget's up less than 1%. percent. budget's up less than 1%. Uh, I don't think that's uh, fiscal mismanagement. Uh, Jerry talks about uh, hiring somebody mid, mid, midstream, the assistant town manager. I was chairman of the board of that. Jerry neglects that we lost somebody. Uh, God bless Wanda Robinson. Uh, we had an employee die. She was the assistant town council. Uh, it actually saved the town money, uh, this expenditure that Jerry, moments ago, uh, Jerry uh, says cost us money. Additionally, uh, the new uh, billet holder, uh, brought 30 years of municipal experience, hot-seated, uh, is now the uh, personal, personnel director, the assistant town manager, and assumed uh, all of Wanda's uh, duties and more. And it's been a tremendous asset. So uh, I don't support this. I could go on. I could go on. I could go on. Uh, Mary Louise started the, uh, the issue tonight by saying we should have the, uh, the time because uh, in case this goes to court. Um, I've been the uh, recipient of Mary Louise's court uh, intentions before the whole board has been. I don't support it. The board, uh, the town voted last year to reduce the budget committee. There's a warrant uh, on for this year to eliminate it. We'll see what happens. And I, I do not support this measure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, seeing, I will close this public hearing at 723. There you go, 723.